Hello everyone and welcome to the Rapido Trains UK 2023 winter announcements. We'll be featuring four 00 gauge locos in this video and there's something of a green theme going on. We've been working on these for some time and are so pleased to be making them public at last. Let's kick things off. Number one on the list is, um, number one. Sterling Single number one is a classic Rapido model, made in association with locomotion models and the National Railway Museum. For years, people have been asking for a second run of these as they can be so hard to find. It's great that our friends at Locomotion Models will be stocking brand new models of number one as it appears in the museum. But what's more is that we'll be adding an extra version to the range for general release. Number one was withdrawn whilst coupled to a large Sterling tender of an 1891 design, but in preparation for the White City exhibition, an old tender was found which had previously been used behind the Doncaster carriage shunter number 112A. As there was no legitimate tender available at this point, it sufficed. Number one ran with this small tender during the anniversary of the Race to the North in the 1930s, as well as its final steaming in the early 1980s, so it'll be perfect for running on your mainline layout in either of those eras. Engineering prototypes of the new tender have already arrived and been reviewed. The order book will close on Monday the 4th of March, and we hope that both versions of the Sterling single will be available in winter 2024. Okay, now saddle up, because the next few locos are saddle tanks. Keeping with the Great Northern theme, we thought that a shunting loco was what was missing from the modern ready-to-run range. So here's the answer, the LNER J52-2, also known as the Great Northern J13 class. Introduced by Henry Ivert in 1897, these chunky shunters were seen the length and breadth of the GNR network, from North London to the northeast of England. Withdrawals began in the 1930s, but were postponed due to the outbreak of the Second World War with most of the J52-2s passing into BR ownership in 1948, being given the classification 3F. Number 68846 made history in 1959 when it was purchased directly from BR by Captain Bill Smith, becoming the very first privately owned XBR steam locomotive, and the J52-2 earned itself a permanent place in the annals of railway preservation history. The aptly and affectionately named Old Lady would live on. Once in his possession, she was repainted into her beautiful pre-grouping guise and numbered to the iconic 1247. With a gorgeous livery, long service history and historical claim to fame, 1247 will always have a fond place in the hearts of travelling enthusiasts and preservation modellers alike. The captain's decisive action showed that preservation was possible on this scale and sparked a wave of like-minded enthusiasts to follow suit. The J52 model has been designed using works drawings to ensure its accuracy and features a variety of liveries covering the loco's history, such as the bold pre-grouping colours of the GNR, through to various black liveries it sported in its final years. The eagle-eyed among you may have seen that we teased number 4471 earlier this week, and here it is! Works number 4471, aka LNR 4226, in a striking black livery lined with red. Modellers can look forward to a smooth-running mechanism, a factory-installed speaker, and a warming firebox glow. Mmm. Tooling variations for this range include having three or four handrail knobs on the tank, different designs of bunker coal rails, safety valves, and chimney options. The model is currently in the last stage of development and will enter tooling shortly. Whilst the J52 is on the large side for a saddle tank, the same cannot be said for the next two. Leaving the east coast, we are heading over to darkest Cornwall, where a certain low bridge dictated an unusual locomotive design. That's right, it's preservation's most famous double act, Alfred and Judy. The first of these was delivered to the China Clay Works at Parr in 1937 and was originally planned to be named Chuff after the distinctive species of Cornish bird. The message was received by Bagnall as Cough, which they thought was rather strange, and so she was sent to Parr without a nameplate. She was finally given nameplates that read Judy after 1955. By 1952, the low-profile Sentinel Toby required replacement, and an upturn in traffic meant that an order was placed for another locomotive. In 1954, Alfred was delivered, named after the manager of the harbour, Alfred Truscott. The locomotives gained a celebrity status not least because of their unusual size and stature. They were some of the last working steam engines in Cornwall and the site became a stronghold of visits by railway enthusiasts. The engines became so popular that they also inspired the Reverend W. Audrey to immortalise them in his railway series stories, carrying a striking yellow livery. Judy was withdrawn with boiler problems in 1969, with Alfred soldiering on until 1977. Both locos can now be found on the Bodmin and Wenford Railway when they aren't touring other preserved railways in the UK. Judy has recently come back into traffic and Alfred's overhaul has been launched, so we hope to see them running together once more. The models are a first and ready to run and have been a challenge to design. Both come with factory fitted speakers and flywheels as standard, the DCC sound option uses a Next18 chip located under the tank, designed in collaboration with ESU. 
The tooling incorporates several of the differences between the locomotives, such as the shape of the bunker, the water fillers, welded versus riveted tanks, and the handrail positions and styles. The cab interior is fully detailed and the rear shutters are separate parts for the user to fit. The models will be sold as two twin packs showing them as they ran in the 1950s and 60s wearing a dark green livery and the lighter green they have had in preservation. The twin packs will come in a rather lovely box with a special booklet and a postcard print of an exclusive Jonathan Clay painting. As well as the double packs, each loco will be available in a different livery in a standard box on its own. Judy is in plain livery, as delivered and running throughout the late 30s and 40s. Alfred is wearing the striking yellow livery it was painted in during the early 2000s, complete with red lining and port of par lettering. These models are in tooling at the moment, and we hope to show samples soon. Rounding up the green machines is something that is rather special to many of our staff. As a company based in the southeast of England, with three of our team being handsome men of Kent, and another two from the part of the county that can't decide if they are a Kentish man or a man of Kent, there is a difference. It's fair to say we are rather enthusiastic about our local locos. So here it is at last, the final component of our South Eastern Chatham goods train, the SECR 01 Class 060. Designed by James Sterling, the O Class was conceived as an all-purpose freight locomotive to work across the entire South Eastern Railway, with 122 being built. 59 O's were later converted into the Class 01 during Wainwright's tenure, with the fitting of a larger boiler in order to compete with the newer C Class. Many of the class survived both global conflicts, the Big Four era, and soldiered on until the last days of British mainline steam, working branch lines such as the Kent and East Sussex Railway and the East Kent Railway. With the sun setting on the 01's future, BR class member number 31065 earned one final claim to fame by leading the Farewell to Steam Rail Tour on the Hawkehurst branch. The last of the class was sadly withdrawn from service in 1962. Thankfully, number 31065 would live on, Esmond Lewis Evans spotted it on a visit to Ashford, where it's been used to train apprentices. He saved it from the scrap heap, and it spent several years at the Ashford Steam Centre. When the museum failed to pay its rent and closed, number 65 was dismantled and secretly dispersed in its component pieces across the southeast. This determined display of preservation cunningly prevented British Rail from claiming it for repossession. It wasn't until 1996 that its parts were moved to the Bluebell Railway, where it can still be seen today and it was rebuilt for the centenary year of the SECR, with its gorgeous fully lined livery, open cab, exposed tender springs, and highly polished brass dome and fittings, number 65 remains one of the most elegant freight locomotives to survive into preservation. The Rapido Trains UK SECR 01 model has been designed using a combination of archival materials and drawings, and an on-site survey of number 65. We would like to thank the Bluebell Railway who accommodated our comprehensive survey, and the Spa Valley Railway, who gave us access to record accurate sounds of number 65 during its short visit to them earlier this year. Our model will be available in a variety of liveries covering the loco's history. Modelers can look forward to a smooth running mechanism with a can motor, a factory installed speaker, a sleek tender connection, and a firebox glow perfect for lighting up all that brass detailing. To encompass a wide variety of classmates, there will be differences in smoke boxes, smoke box lubricators, and smoke box doors, tender toolboxes buffers and buffer beams. Some versions were fitted with steam heating. The pipes of this will be an optional part. The model is currently ready for tooling and we hope to have samples in the spring. That's all the new announcements for now, but if you are going to the Worley National Model Railway Exhibition on the 25th and 26th of November, come and find us on stand A35, where we will have 3D printed samples of the O1 Bagnalls and J52, as well as the engineering sample of the new Sterling tender to drool over. In addition to these exciting new shiny things, we'll also be showcasing work in progress models such as working samples of our N-Gage OAA and SECR wagon packs, the 00-Gage LNWR Diagram 88 vans announced last month, the all-new Lomac, as well as new engineering prototypes of our GWR 4400 Prairies. Hope to see you there. Bye for now.